Joff, now, if, well, for those of us members that went outside today uh, and stood with the farmers and rural communities, we saw the strength of frustration and anger out there. And the tone and language, I'm afraid, from Labour ministers in recent weeks has done nothing to lower the temperature of the current debate. We had sweeping statements from the First Minister, like farmers in Wales voted to leave the EU. What a ridiculous statement to make. Ridiculous statement. And it makes me angry when I hear the First Minister say that. Because all that does is, sh is blame then farmers for the government's <laughs> own flawed policy. The First Minister then suggesting that farmers want to be given subsidy for farmers to do just do whatever farmers think they would like to do with it. I've never heard a farmer or the sector suggest that to me. They haven't done so. And I really can't believe that the First Minister does not understand that subsidy exists, of course, in order for our country to manage our food supply, as has been the case in the UK, in Europe and around the world for decades. It does not exist to benefit farmers. Subsidy exists to benefit the public to make sure that we have a food, affordable food prices in our shops. Now, the government should not be surprised by the strength of feeling today, the largest protest that this Senate has ever seen, because of the language that Labour ministers have used. And if they want to lower the heat in this debate, they've got to stop using the prerogative language that they have been using up to now. Now, no farmers, no food. Right? That's, what the far that's what the slogans say outside. Let's break that down. If no farmers, or a reduced level of farmers, we become more reliant on food being imported from outside yeah, of Wales and from outside the UK. So let's open our eyes to the danger that that brings. We saw during COVID, didn't we? We had shelves that were empty in some key areas. Uh, fruit, veg, milk, meat. That was during COVID. We know the volatility of our supply chains. We've got a war in Ukraine. In one country in the world, we can see the impact that is having on our global supply chain in just one country, right? Now, we are sleepwalking. We are sleepwalking if we cannot guarantee our own food supply for our own country and, and, and make sure that we have our supply chains in our country in order. And we shouldn't be surprised why there is so much frustration, not only from farmers, but from the general public also. And we should be doing everything we can, should we not, to make sure that we're producing as much food as we eat as possible locally here in Wales. And I know we got support for that. And I, I know we got support from that across the chamber. And that is what we need to do. Now, the other thing that frustrates me, and I think it's frustrating farmers, right? Yes, I will. Strange dichotomy that we have where we, I understand the arguments for food security, but at the same time, my upland hill farmers are exporting much of their lamb because the market pays a premium for it in Brussels and in France and also in the Middle East. So you, you, can't, so you can't be arguing, I don't think, that we are going to force those farmers to put that produce on our local shelves? Or, or are you? And are we looking at price controls? I, 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 think, I think, Hugh, you are deliberately trying to misunderstand the point I'm making. Surely we must be making sure that the own food that we are producing, that we eat locally. Of course we should. And of course we can export beyond Wales as well. That's exactly what we want to be doing. Now, can I, uh, to move on to another point, what frustrates me is when government ministers say they are listening, right? Government ministers say they're listening. Um, listen, can more members on all benches please ensure that I can hear the speaker and others can hear the speaker? Just because a minister says they're listening does not mean that they are listening. We didn't see that happen with NVZs. We didn't see that happen with Bovan TB. And we're not seeing that happening now with the sustainable farming scheme. We know that because the, for several years, the unions of the farming sector have been saying it's unworkable. The tree cover aspect of the SFS is unworkable, yet it still turns up in a consultation published just two months ago. So that does not demonstrate that the government is listening, I'm afraid, at all. And our motion today highlighted, highlights, of course, the 2022 proposals that would see 5,500 Welsh jobs lost in the wider, and of course there would be much wider implications for that for the wider economy. But the frustrations from the farming community go but beyond the SFS as well. 
Farmers really feel that they are breaking po at breaking point. You've got the NVZ regulations, right, enforcing farmers to put in infrastructure when it's not needed because there are no environmental issues in those areas, making them then unprofitable with the rest of the UK and the rest of Europe. We have bovine TB, a cruel, cruel disease in animal stock and in wildlife as well. Yeah. And all that is going to do is, is, and it is, exasperating farmers as they have sleepless nights yeah. where they wait for their TB results. So I'm afraid we have to do more on TB as well. We have to be culling uh, affected wildlife in order to ensure that we eradicate this bovine TB for good as well. So to end, presiding officer, I think we will, have a new, we will have a new First Minister in the next couple of weeks and we will have new Government Ministers. So there is an opportunity now for the Government to seize a different direction and I hope the Government will.